in our small businesses, that we are so collaborative. And uh, hopefully today we'll show you a few ways that uh, we do that even on top of what you may already know. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. There are several accelerators. Some just had their deadlines in, but there are still a few uh, that, okay, Grassroots, um, they are doing March 1st. Uh, G-Beta is doing March 11th. Hopefully we had lots of people uh, apply for the OKC Latino. Um, Startup Launchpad is also an accelerator here. Cowboy Innovation, um, the OMFA. So there's lots of opportunities and programs for founders. And so many of them have spring deadlines. So please encourage your clients or yourself to apply. And if you are an existing person in the ecosystem, maybe you want to mentor. Um, so more information like we found on Launch OKC Metro. That's kind of the convening spot for everything happening here in the metro and then statewide obviously there are more resources for our partners in rural areas and in Tulsa. Um, member highlights. This is fun since I just mentioned Launch OKC. I like to call her our master convener but uh, our January member highlight is Kristen Garcia from The Verge. Kristen is a key participant. Yeah! <laughs> Where are Kristen? Uh, Kristen is a key participant in our ecosystem and we encourage you to read all about her in our OVS newsletter. Um, I think I might have been forgetting to click. Uh, <laughs> yes, there she is. There's her lovely picture. So up next is our newsletter sponsor, Insurica. We are so grateful to them for years having sponsored our newsletter. Um, and then we want to also take a moment to recognize new OVF members. So if you are a new OVF member, please stand. We have Alex Evers with Meridian Technology Center. We have uh, Magna, I, I'm gonna mess up your last name, um, but from Boyd Street Ventures, if she is here. And then we've also got Dr. Rachel Lane with Canopy Health Tech, and then Keaton Fry with Blue Stem Resources. So welcome guys, thank you so much for being here. Then, uh, one thing that is also cool about all the content and intentional programming that OVF provides is our podcast. So each of our speakers is invited to participate in a deep dive podcast conversation with past chair Kyle Goldie. Kyle also has his own podcast and does a lot of great things for all kinds of members of our ecosystem. He's kind of everywhere. This is my I think, second time to see him today. So <laughs> um, we're very grateful for Kyle. And please check out the podcast. If you're a podcast listener, you can check, listen anywhere that you listen to your favorite podcast. We also have a great YouTube presence. Um, so for our dessert sponsor, OU, Office of uh, <laughs> Technology Commercialization. So thank you, Andrew. Andrew also serves on our board, and we sure think you're sweet. So thank you for our, thank you for being the dessert sponsor. Um, and then we have the OVF Awards coming up. Uh, so the uh, nomination window has closed, but you, it's time to get your tickets and see who all we're going to celebrate and recognize. So please reserve your seat now. That event is going to be in May. And um, tickets are not part of membership, So, but if you are a member, you do get discounted ticket prices. There is a QR code. So if you are thinking about them right now, you could go ahead and get that in. Uh, and then I think Jacob's going to come up here and give us a quick little transition so that our virtual participants can see the lovely faces of our panel. And so if you are going to speak on our Share the Love panel, uh, you go ahead and start making your way to the front. So I want to welcome Brad Rickleman, Allison Watkins, Sujita Ghosh, Jim Ditton, and Andrew Pollack. So we've got a microphone for each side. And uh, you guys can pass it as you uh, respond to the questions. And we are really moving through this fast. It's only 12.06. It, sorry, we're doing a little technical. So sorry. Here comes Jacob again. But so while they're doing that, I can the YouTube people, they can see our participants, right, on the owl. And so, uh, oh, and so we've got the split screen going. Great. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and start asking the first question. So um, let's see. We'll start over here with Brad. So Brad, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself 
and why you joined OVF and how long you've been involved. Yeah, Andrew, you have to share. <laughs> Uh, my name is Brad Brooklyn. I'm with Meridian Technology Center. We have a business incubator in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Um, I've actually been a member for 16 years, 17 years, I think Rex and I were talking about. And um, when I first started being in Stillwater, I wanted to kind of get a sense of what's going on in the ecosystem around the state. And when I joined, um, this was really the tail end of this was a men in suits eating lunch, looking for investment opportunities. This was the on-ramp to get money in, in Oklahoma, particularly in Oklahoma City. You had to know somebody who knew somebody who had some money ready to invest. We didn't really have a very robust ecosystem. And so getting started was really a sense of who's out there and who are the people we need to know if we want to get a business to get some funding. So that's why I started. Great. Andrew? Uh, yeah, so my name is Andrew Pollock. I'm the managing director at the University of Oklahoma's Office of Technology and Commercialization. We're the tech transfer office for the university and manage all of the intellectual property portfolio. Uh, I think I joined OBF and became a member about nine years ago, a little over a year of, of being in the office. Um, the university already had a membership and, and I kind of became the representative. Uh, but my first involvement uh, actually I think came even before that, maybe 15 years ago. Uh, I, as on the other side, I wasn't the entrepreneur, but I was uh, employee number three at a startup company that was looking for money. I think they came and pitched. And I remember sitting in the audience thinking, boy, I would love to be a part of an organization like this one day. I had no idea how to do that um, uh, and no time or money, money to be a part of that. And so it was very much a surreal experience to get to come back and actually actually join that. Uh, the way we use uh, our membership and, and the way we're really interested in this, you know, the, the university has a lot of, uh, of great minds, a lot of great technologies, uh, but a lot of it is focused internally, right? And this is really an opportunity for us to connect, especially from a entrepreneurial idea and technologies to build businesses around outside with the community. Cool. So Allison has a microphone. Hi, everybody. I'm Allison Watkins. Good to see you all. And I'm the founder and CEO of Watkins County Products. We are a female pelvic health company based in Edmond, Oklahoma. And I have been involved in OVF since about, I think, maybe it's 2017, 2018, something like that, a while. Um, but, you know, my company addresses very, very taboo issues. So urinary incontinence. And then to add to that, our solution is actually a vaginal insert. So my first engagement here was whenever Shay asked me, do you want to pitch at one of our events? I was like, absolutely. I'm just so excited. People actually want to hear about this, right? But I'm so passionate about it. There's a wonderful opportunity, a very comfortable room to be in. And so I immediately just was like, okay, I'm going to be involved in this. So that's how I started. Well, my name is Jim Denton, and uh, some of you who've been here a long time know me. I'm a CPA here in Oklahoma City and, and based out of Edmond. And I've been a member since about 2012. And uh, and so do the math, that's 12 years. And I kind of stumbled into this because I was talking to Rex about it. I was working at I2E uh, doing an audit for, for them on one of their entities. And, uh, and somebody over there said, hey, there's a luncheon today over at the uh, Health Sciences Auditorium. You need to go over to it. And, and so that coupled with, I figured out that one of my employees who was leaving which we have a lot of that in the CPA, by the way. One of the employees that was leaving was had a membership. And so I latched onto that membership and, and used the rest of it for the rest of the, the rest of the term. And then said, well, this is a no-brainer. I need to be a part of this. And uh, the, the neat thing about this, and we'll talk about it a little bit later, is the, the variety of people that are part of OVF, and that's what attracted me to it. And, um, and that's my story. Thanks, Jim. Um, hi, everyone. Sujita Roche, Venture Advisor at I2B. 
happy Valentine's Day. I love to see all the color, full of reds and pinks in the room. Uh, and thankful that you're here choosing to spend your day here at OVF. Um, so my role at ITV is that of venture advisor. Uh, ITV is a nonprofit organization that helps Oklahoma founders uh, all the way from idea to enterprise. So our focus is in the high growth business model and we help our founders by providing advisory services through various programs that we have uh, all the way from the concept stage to positioning for investment. Um, so my journey with OVF was actually my uh, started through my previous role before I to leave when I was in Ada America. Um, and I noticed, you know, working there that there was a sort of like a big gap between connecting rural and urban. Like there's, there's a lot of great activity that was happening in a place like Ada, but we were not aware of the resources available. Um, well, through my organization, I was able to uh, become a member of OBS, and that would really help me uh, like as an individual who was learning more about the ecosystem, about learning more about venture, uh, get that, uh, and also help connect uh, kind of all the resources that are available statewide to rural communities. Uh, and then I have been on the board for OBF for a little over two years since I've been at TV. So happy to be here. Awesome. And I realized that as both Jim and Strachito were speaking, my intro to OBF was pretty similar because I was actually, when I was in grad school, doing a fellowship at I2E and started to get involved. And then later I worked in Enid. And so that rural component of connecting these, at the time, micropolitan areas with what's happening across the state has been just so valuable. Um, so our next question that we're going to ask the panelists is how has OVF added value to your life, to your business, and to your clients? So um, who wants to go first? I'll just keep it rolling. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think uh, that was like a really major component uh, through, you know, I feel like this is one of the truly statewide organizations that's connecting so many different communities and organizations. But um, so at I2E, we work it with companies all the way from concept to those who are currently fundraising and also have received investment. Uh, a part of that journey is uh, learning how to pitch, how to efficiently communicate your idea. And uh, kind of what Allison was mentioning earlier, uh, the biggest value we've received is like helping our clients get connected with this organization to either come and pitch and provide, get that exposure from the platform. Uh, I think the group here has diversified so much over the years. Uh, we not just have investors, but also ecosystem builders, potential customer connections and things like that. So uh, having access to that exposure and that platform and a safe space, like it's formal enough where, you know, the entrepreneurs are really paying a lot of attention to their presentation and making sure they're doing a good job, but also it's a safe space that they know they're not just getting judged, right? They're getting uh, valuable feedback. So that's been really great. You stole my thing. <laughs> you know, as a professional, it makes um, it makes a lot of sense to be a part of this kind of organization because you have the opportunity to meet someone that's at the very beginning, sometimes at the stage of their their uh, idea or their company or those kind of things and to me it's always interesting to see what their pain points are what are they experiencing what do they need to get done what are the what are the opportunities there for maybe somebody else in the room to solve the problem and the longer you're in a group like this the more you know who can do it and and you you tend to say, well, so-and-so can help you with this, this issue, and you need to talk to so-and-so. It's been many times, I think most meetings that I come to, it's, it's putting somebody with somebody else. And that's a, it's a networking thing, and it becomes almost second nature, you know, after you do it a few times and you become fluent at it. Uh, so it's a real opportunity to do that. And then, uh, Oh, there's just so many things you get out of, out of uh, working with each other on different projects. And I can look around the room and see people that, that we've worked with and, and, and helped in one way or another, or that, that have helped me in one way or another. So it's always, a, it's, a, it's a very mutual type group. 
How much time do I have? I just go on. <laughs> um, no, I mean, first for me, just like having the opportunity to pitch, you know, this taboo subject and everything and get feedback. And then, you know, transactionally, right? We've done business with organizations that I've met through OVF. So, you know, Insurga, um, Cortado Ventures, I'm on the board with of The Verge with Kristen. And, you know, I've been on the podcast with Kyle a couple of times. It's been such great exposure and made possible by with Tracy. Like, I mean, we've done business. Outside of just doing business, though, for me, like, it's the camaraderie, right? I mean, being a founder in a startup is, is difficult. And you're always raising money and you're needing to have these conversations. And I just want to tell this quick story yeah. about Floyd Farmall because he was great. He's no longer with us. He's since past. But I met him here through OBF, and he uh, was an inventor and had patents all over the world. And he was also part of the um, Pizza Hut family. And so I was trying to raise some money, right? I'm like, hey, you want to go to lunch? I go to his office. He shows me all of his patents. It was incredible. I went to lunch with him. I rode with him, and he was running red lights. It was terrifying. <laughs> um, but he told me this story about diversification, right? And I had no idea what I was going to gain from that meeting. Like I said, I was raising money. But he explained to me that in the Pizza Hut business, they at one time thought everybody was going to buy their um, <clears throat> their uh, salad dressing. Like everybody loves a salad dressing. So they start manufacturing, or I guess. Bottling, yeah. yeah, bottling salad dressings, right? And then they're like, oh, we'll do croutons too. It costs so much to ship the salad dressing that they lost their money on it and the croutons, you know, just exploded. And so, you know, just that conversation in itself and seeing his patterns feeling really inspired to, you know, it's just, it was a great, it was a great interaction. And so, even if it's not transactional, you know, the, the friends and the mentors that you meet in this organization are tremendous and, you know, it had influenced me in many ways. So there's that. And also we won the most promising new venture at my company a few years ago. And that was great too, because people really from all over the United States, you know, on the coasts and investors and board members, they were really impressed by that. And it, it helped, right? It helped kind of validate you know, what we were doing. And, and so that was also a, a wonderful, um, you know, thing that came from OBS. So I'm on board, you know, just um, happy to be here and yeah, recommend everybody join. You can be our spokesperson anytime. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Andrew, so what about you? How has OBF added value to your business and clients in life? Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm going to echo uh, kind of uh, what was already said, because uh, I'm trying to distill this down to one word, and that's connection. Right? It, it is the connections that I that I meet here, that I get to interact with, uh, that have uh, become you know friends, but also uh, we've recommended some of our businesses and our startups to use um, from a from a client uh, services perspective. Um, but but I do I do think it just really goes back to connection. I, I was amazed, you know, again. Having sat on the on the other side early on, the first time I came, I was like, oh, this is going to be really intimidating. It's going to be hard to approach people. I, I have to have a lot of things I need to talk about. I'm going to have a kind of an agenda. And what I've learned very quickly is to release that agenda, right? It is to, is to not focus on that agenda and to just come and, and meet people and talk about things. Now, I want to make it clear, I always have problems. So I, I will constantly be asking questions because I, I need help. Um, I, and, I, and I'm always selling too. So, you know, we've, we've got a great portfolio of technologies. If you're a young entrepreneur wanting to start a company and don't have a business, come see me. I've got, I've got patents galore uh, for, for you to commercialize for us. Um, but, but really, it, it is that connection. And, I, and I'll kind of distill that down and demonstrate it in, in what has happened already today. So uh, I've, got a, I've got a guest here, Chase. Everyone say hi to Chase. Hey, Chase. Hey, Chase. Hey, Chase, if you have any. So, so Chase and I uh, have known each other for about a year and a half now. Um, uh, he was actually introduced to me by another uh, former, current uh, uh, OVF member, Ch uh, Craig Shimasaki. I don't see Craig here today, but um, uh, we met Craig Chase through him. Uh, and, and Chase is wanting to be an entrepreneur at some point. Right? So Chase is a young man, uh, has his master's in microbiology, is working for Northern Regional, has some ideas for some businesses, and just kind of wants to uh, uh, be an entrepreneur at some point. But he didn't really know where to start. And I said, look, I know where to start. You should come and have lunch with us today. Right. And and uh, I don't know who I didn't I didn't have a list of 
people that Chase needs to meet. Uh, because what's wonderful is is you just sit down and you get to meet a, a different people. So Ch Chase and I sat down. Brad uh, asked Chase what he does, and within five minutes, Brad has a company that's in his incubator that uh, really could benefit from some of Chase's knowledge, some of his uh, uh, work out that he does today. Chase may have some opportunity to work with that company in an entrepreneurial way, uh, and already that connection was made. Right? None of that was planned. I didn't think, oh, I bet I got him. I got to introduce him to Brad. But just because of those interactions, that, that's really how it works here, and and it does kind of every time, and it's kind of what's amazing to me. I can add nothing more to what all of you are saying. It's just, but, but running a business incubator, we have you know, 15, 20, 25 clients that we're working with at any given time. Um, even I don't know everything about all their, their pockets. So we need other people to help out, of course. Um, this is a great place to be able to get to know the type of people that you need to know to help your clients get to the next place. And I think that's the key to what we're doing. Great. So one of the things, I don't know how many people here, show of hands, are members. Hey, so you guys have already drank the Kool-Aid. But we, we are an accessible group. We have different levels of membership for founders that is very affordable to single members, corporate, investor, incubator, um, underwriter. And so there are so many ways to really get involved. And beyond, you know, taking that initial first step and joining, uh, we have committees. And um, so if you serve on one of our committees, um, I see some people from membership. I see some people from our community outreach, which deals with mostly startups. You guys want to kind of give a wave. Uh, that way people can see you when we have our networking portion here at the end of the session. But um, in, in case you want to get involved. So this next question for the panelists is, if someone was on the fence about either joining as a member or they're an existing member and they're thinking about, should I serve on a committee? Should I look at joining the board? Um, what would you say to them about uh, the reasons to get involved? And then also maybe if you do serve in a capacity, what you would, how you serve and what your time commitment is like. I'm really stacking questions, but I believe in you guys. So we'll, we'll start with Allison. <laughs> well, <laughs> Serving on the board is what I've done. I'm not on a committee yet. Um, I am trying to get through the FDA, so once I finish that, I'll work on the committee. But yeah, I mean, you know, I just think that what we're doing is important for our ecosystem, right? We are interacting with companies and helping them build, interacting with, you know, existing companies and helping them keep, you know, additional clientele. I mean, it's important for, for Oklahoma to, to be involved. And so I think that um, if you have... The time and interest in helping, it's a lot of fun. You're going to meet a lot of great people, and it's very rewarding. So I encourage everyone to um, either join. You can take baby steps. You know, it took me a long time to have time for the board, but it's just what well, it's six meetings a year. Like, it's it's really not that big of a deal, but you're, you're making a difference. So sign up today. Yes. <laughs> now. <laughs> So, do you want me to repeat all of those questions? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, any organization you get involved with, throw yourself into it. And to me, that is that is the best way to find out about the organization and to, to get involved. You get what you put into it. And so, as you you look at membership, and membership is just a name on something that you a dollar amount by. That's not going to work. It's coming to the lunches, talking with people, coming to the kickoff events, and and being involved in a committee, being involved on the board. Hold up your hand and say, yes, I'll do that. <laughs> and the best things in life happen. Sometimes some crummy things happen. But most of the time, the best things in life happen. And, and uh, so you, you do that. Do that. I want to encourage you to do, do that. If you want to get on a committee, we've got a great one. It is called the Membership Committee. Wow. And it's, it's wonderful. We, we play games. We get, we get, <laughs> This is your Gina talk and, and uh, <laughs> we pontificate about life, and it's a fun committee to be on. 
So, so that's a great one. So, <laughs> that's a great pitch. Um, I, I think one of the things that I admire the most about OBF and having been on the board is this is one of the most uh, long-standing organizations. I think it's been the first organization to be in the venture capital scene in Oklahoma, but it is it has adapted so much, and we are always flexible as a board to adapt to the changing ecosystem. Uh, we have so many more resources and programs around the ecosystem now, and so the gaps that we see are different. And I really appreciate the flexibility of uh, you know those leading organization and the board to uh, adapt to that. So with that, we are always looking for new ideas and looking for new energy. Uh, you know, some of the things that we have been able to implement in the last uh, year or so, uh, for example, you know, branching out to Tulsa and things like that, it would not have been possible without kind of the effort and the help of members. Uh, so if you have any new ideas, if you have the things you want to see, I think the best way to do that is talk to the board, uh, you know, become part of the committee. Um, and also I would say that, you know, one of the easiest and adding on to Jim's uh, membership deal is uh, I think a lot of us have like the guest, um, additional guest pass, right? So bring someone like, uh, you know, Brad, uh, sorry, Andrew did today. Uh, I have brought in guests and it has been an amazing experience for them, whether they go on to be members or not, it adds a lot of value to our meetings uh, and for them as well. So I encourage you to do that. Great. I love that you brought up again, like more about our statewide footprint, because we really are um, trying to bring in the additional areas across the state. And another great way that if you wanted like a uh, low uh, commit, well, it's actually not low commitment. It's actually a very intense week. But Global Entrepreneurship Week is probably one of the best examples for every single member of the ecosystem across the state comes together. And Kristen would have to verify, but we were like in the top three for entrepreneurial events in the nation, right? Like Oklahoma really brought it. <laughs> so uh, now to Andrew. Hello. So uh, a couple of things. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break the question down in why would you want to join uh, OVF in general? And then what the benefit is of joining the board or a committee or, or being involved in the leadership of the organization? So from, uh, from a why join the, the organization, I, I would say it is, it is really amazing the access you have to unpretentious talent. Right? There are real community leaders in this building of, of entrepreneurial organizations, senior leadership that have been doing this for several years that, you know, you have, it, it would be hard to get introductions to these people, but yet they're all here and they're all willing to give their time. Um, and, and I just find that amazing. You know, if you think about an organization like this in a, in a you know, what would be considered an entrepreneurial club, right? Like it would be hard to get into that room. It is very easy to get into this room, and it is very it's, the people here are very accessible and want to help you. There's a, there's a genuine there's a genuine desire to make this ecosystem better. From a board and leadership standpoint, I would say this: I've been a part of several organizations and on different boards, and most of those times, it starts with a concept of what can make this organization better, what what helps that organism. And what makes me better? What do I get out of this? And, and I will tell you from our meetings and from our board meetings, um, it, almost everything is focused on how do we deliver more value to our members? How do we make this organization better for the people who participate in it, not the organization stronger itself? It, it's very externally focused and it has a genuine desire and just a real benevolence of how do we make this better for everyone? Uh, how do we include more people from different areas? Uh, type of mentality that, that you just frankly don't see in a lot of, a lot of organizations. Very good. Um, I think in terms of membership and, and getting involved, I think there's real value to having an organization like this. And so I think even if you were to sort of break it down in the most pragmatic manner of like at this many lunches and it costs this much or something like that, there's a tremendous value that the organization provides on top of all that, that your participation that and we'll help our entrepreneurs. You know, I, I like, um, I follow Brad Feld's work a lot. He talks about how the entrepreneur is the center of everything. They're the ones that make everything happen. All the rest of us are this penumbra, this circle around the entrepreneurs that help things happen. But you can't have that circle if you don't have a way to sort of interact in that way with each other. And this gives us that opportunity to do so. So if you're on the edge and you're kind of like, well, 
you know, 500, 600 bucks, um, you know, should I or shouldn't I? But also think about the additional value you're providing to our ecosystem. I think that's really important. As far as being involved in committees and, and boards, and I've certainly served my time on the board here and things of that sort, I think that what I like to do is find something small that you are interested in, commit a small amount of time to that regularly, and then make it happen. So what I'm saying is, is don't say, oh God, is this going to be 40 hours a month of work for you? Take an hour out of your month and say, I'm going to spend an hour and I'm going to help Shay get one more member or two more members. Or I'm going to be on a committee to do something for an hour. We all have an hour. Find that hour that's worthwhile to yourself and put it in. The, and, and then you're adding in. So instead of thinking that you're like, oh God, I can't get more than get one more thing. You say, this is one thing I can do. I can make one more connection. I can make one happen. We do that. I think good things are going to pop out of it. And that's where you make the real value out of being participating is by putting in your contribution, so to speak, to that piece. I want to, real quick, since you still have the mic, um, things that supplement, because you were, when I actually first joined Career Tech, um, I would, I don't think it's wrong to say, like, mentor, but, like, getting involved in, like, the Oklahoma Business Incubator Association and the groups that partner directly with OVF, because a lot of, I mean, from awards to our outreach committee, can you kind of talk about like the value that even OVF brings to an organization for that type of ecosystem builder? Well, I think that we can't be everywhere. We can't, uh, whatever our organization may be, or people in our network, I can't be in every community. I don't have an incubator everywhere in the state. And so I need to be able to throw my, cast my net widely. And uh, organizations like this are those places where we can sort of interact with all the different people we need to. And you can create a tremendous amount of value by being a participating grant. The second part about it is, is that I'm a big development person. I believe that the next generation coming up is going to do tremendous work, but they're not going to do it if I just sort of disappear out that door and don't do something. It's my job to open a door for the next person. I can't do that if I don't know where the doors are. So I've got to be here so that the people that I came up with um, who helped me I have to do the same thing. And the way I do that is by creating an opportunity where people can come in, they can grow, they can learn, they can do things so they can develop the next group. So good things will happen. And, you know, my uh, uh, teacher retirement does well in investments and everything. And you all bring wealth into the state. And then if I go to giant somewhere to be, right? I need you. And so that's good, you know. Okay, so we have been very efficient with our time. So how about for the audience? Does anyone have questions or a comment you'd like to add about your own experience? We can pass the mic. Give this a, you know, five to seven minutes. Let you guys also brag on OVF. Or if you see something that we can improve, we're all ears. Shay has her hand up. Cool. So for our virtual participants to repeat that, Shay was saying that on the contact page of the ovf.org website, you can uh, click on the wish list. And so if there's something you would like to see, something that you, you know, if there's an event you think OVF would be a good partner for, um, or a topic that you would love to see presented, because we do plan, you know, our calendar out reasonably in advance, sometimes not as far in advance as she would like, <laughs> but I'll, I'll, I won't be the chair next year, so I won't be as many, you know, <laughs> kinks in your plan. But um, uh, no, that is that is a really great resource. So the wish list on the contact page for the OVF website. Um, and then also one thing you might have noticed is that when you register for each of our power lunches, there is a, a field there that says, I would like to connect with. And so you can type in that field and say like, I wanna, it can be a specific person. It could be a, uh, just a topic you're interested in, or I just need to find someone that knows X about X. And the great thing is that our membership committee and our board uh, sees that. And so I think 
well, everyone here pretty much echoed, we are all willing to share the love and connect you with whom you need to be connected with. And if we don't know, someone in our group does know and we'll find them. And so that's a great resource too. So please utilize the wish list. And when you are registering, if you do have a specific need, really do use that I want to connect with box. How about anyone else? Kyle, I, I knew that you would speak. <laughs> So for each of our panelists and Kara, when you're out in the community, meeting people through personal or, or business connections and, and it kind of light bulb goes off in your head, like maybe they need to know about OBS. What are some of the things that make that light bulb go off for you? And then what's your pitch to that person when you're just talking one-on-one? -on -one? What do you say to them to get them to understand the value that you find in OBF and be interested? Well, I'm always, you know, thinking about the founder, right? Because that's who I can really relate to the most. And so, you know, thinking through, I was actually thinking, are oh, there are other companies that I've worked with too, outside of the ones that I mentioned? Like I too, we helped me build my first deck. And, you know, I mean, so I'm always thinking, okay, you want to get in the room with people. This is where you start, right? Because the door was opened for me. And this was like the first time I was ever able to pitch. So I'm always thinking about, really the founder and then the really great founders that I meet out there. You know, I think because the most promising new venture award was so wonderful for my organization, you know, I like to try to think about um, good companies that would um, fit that mold as well. So, um, you know, I recommend if you guys know of anybody that is building something that's exciting, you know, there are several different awards, you know, that's another way that you, um, you know, that I personally try to think about how it's going to influence founders. So. I'll jump in real quick. One of the things that I noticed is we have so many people that are choosing to come to Oklahoma now that they don't really know how to navigate the community. And it is uh, an ever-expanding ecosystem, and it can be confusing with where to start. So I really like to uh, encourage people to check out OVF because, one, it's a friendly room. They kind of get a snapshot of the ecosystem in a small space. And that really then, um, it's, it's just welcoming. And then as they, you, they we usually find them in primary contact. And so that person to kind of hold their hand as they navigate the ecosystem. And honestly, as a career tech incubator, I always say, start with a tech center. But there's, you know, we have higher ed in the room. We have uh, so many entrepreneurial support organizations and nonprofits and service providers. Literally, we all do work together. So my bias does shine through for career tech, but in, you could come to any single person here and they would help them. So whenever I see someone that's brand new to the state or to an industry vertical or something like that, I, I think this is a great starting space because they can kind of see the breadth and then choose where they need to go. I, just, I would say, you know, the other piece of that is, is I think about, I saw base connecting here earlier. I, he's right in the back. Great. You know, um, I remember first meeting him for their Enid regional development. They had a little business plan competition. They did. He was presenting. He had this idea where that when people move to a base, the house, usually the wives, but, but the spouse doesn't know where to find a good dry cleaner or find a good uh, painter or somebody to move. Or it was a social media kind of thing and Enid, Oklahoma, and, and, you know, so initially, it was interesting, but it was like, oh, okay. But as time goes on, you run into him again, all of a sudden he's the next place. Now I'm thinking, OV, you know, it starts becoming a place where we, you know, entrepreneurs move at different paces. And OVF is a nice way to get that entrepreneur sort of into the next place. Well, and to watch the evolution. And watch the evolution. evolution as they go along. And now he's a member, thank you very much. But, you know, what matters is that it was that sort of, I think that we underestimate the importance of the persistence over time of doing things. We always look for the immediate, uh, the, 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 the billionaire today, the, the thing that gets done. But most of the time, it's a, it's a slog. It's a long slog of process. It takes different people at different places. Well, if you have to rebuild your network at every single step you make, it's going to be tremendously difficult for you to make the next step. If you can step in at point A, and maybe you go to the verge and you work on a, a you know, with their, with, with them, and then you start with an accelerator, and then you maybe you move a little further, and now you're in an, an, 
an incubator, and you're coming to the OPM, you're doing this, this, and this, and then you're meeting IT, you're meeting one of our venture capitalists. Over the span of two, three, four, five years, all of a sudden, an entrepreneur is ready for the next places so they can make it to the next step. And I think there's a tremendous value in that, in what we're doing, that's by the continuity that we can provide, that otherwise, you're just a, you're a sheep amongst wolves out there. You know, I always tell people, I said, I'm the only person that you're going to come in and talk to that isn't going to ask you to give them money. Give me, write me a check if I want to talk to you, right? Because we're here to help you. We're here to make you be successful as a business owner. And so you have that ability as an entrepreneur to pour over people like this to help you get to the next step. And I think they're tremendously valuable. Do we have another question from the audience? Are there any inputs from our virtual participants? It's on YouTube, so I'm, Jacob, I think, would have to let us know if someone is. He's, we're all good on that front? Okay, so then if there are no other questions, then we're going to go ahead and throw a survey at you. Um, am I still flipping or are you flipping? I am okay. Is it working? Oh, there we. Go. It's not moving on my screen. I wasn't looking at the at the at the big screen. So sorry about that. Um. So yeah, please take a moment to answer the question for us. Your feedback is important. Uh, if your phone doesn't have that capability, the uh, survey will be emailed out to you. Um. And then also, if you are joining us virtually, I think the link should be in the chat. And we have found that our response rate is so much greater when we sit here and apply a little awkward pressure on you to just go and fill it out now. Okay. I'm going to get going whenever people stop looking at their phones, unless you've now switched and you're replying to emails, then we're just going to move on <laughs> because it's tempting once, you, once you've unlocked it. <laughs> Who needs me? Um, so now we are going to move on to our door prize. And Standards IT has been so gracious to continue sponsoring our door prize. However, Danny is not able to be with us here today. And so the prize will be mailed to you. But if you are so fortunate as to be here with us in 3D, if you will glance underneath the table in front of your seat, you may find a neon sticker. So if everyone wants to take a, a quick gander, um, if you have the neon sticker, you're the winner. <laughs> Is it an empty spot? <laughs> If you are an opportunist, you can check these vacant seats. <laughs> it should be underneath the table. And you know, because we're doing so good on time, but since you have to wait for your prize to be mailed to you, I'm going to let you say a little bit about who you are so that we can all learn. So here we go. Cassidy, tell us about you since you're the winner of the World Prize. My name is Cassidy Meyer. I'm here today with John Martell. So I actually just graduated in May of 2023. And I started at Naples, Oklahoma the following July as an accelerated career track program associate. So I'm in their management training program rotating through the commercial banking group right now. Thank you. And so Shay will get your info and oh Jenny will get your info and you will get something happy in the mail. So okay, I'm gonna go back up to the front. And we're gonna talk about our upcoming events. Do what? Oh, yeah, panelists, you can, you don't have to be on display anymore. <laughs> Although we are so grateful for you. <laughs> you guys are good sports. 
Okay, so upcoming events. Uh, we basically have our pitch lunches. Those are very exciting. We get to hear from several companies at each one of those. So March 13th, we will be in Tulsa at 36 Degrees North. They've been a great partner for us. I think there's five companies pitching. I think that's right. So six. Six in March. So we're going to hear from six companies in March in Tulsa. And then um, on April 10th, here back here at Metrotech Spring Lake, we will hear from five startups. So those are always really exciting. Um, and especially like as we just talked about, all the ways that people can give back. So if you are a funder, I bet they're really excited to meet you. But just as much as like other opportunities to pitch, like even at One Million Cups, it's what can the community do for you? And so there might be some feedback or maybe you need to like some testers or just connection to someone. So how exciting for those 11 companies to be chosen and to pitch to us. Um, uh, then May 16th is our OVF Awards and we will be at the Oklahoma History Center. And uh, again, your reminder, please buy your tickets, please come. We have some uh, great awards that we will be uh, handing out. And I think um, we have a pretty exciting speaker as well. So I think that should be coming out in your uh, email announcements soon. Um, and then before I hit the next slide for our networking time, I always like to kind of, we already know that many of you are members, but how many of you are founders? We'll do a show of hands. Okay, so we've got some good founders here. How many of you are funders, whether you are a bank, a VC group, an angel, LP? How many of you? Great. So founders and funders. How about service providers? Who here can help? Yeah, we have accountants, we have insurance, HR, organizational development, lots of people here in the room. What about um, entrepreneurial support organizations? Those might be your educational entities, your incubators. Yeah. So, okay, so now you've got an idea of who's here. So when I click this slide to have our networking time. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, <laughs> this is, we're going to take that as a signal. But now it's time to mingle and network. So um, if you need a prompt question, um, maybe, you know, what's something you love in your life since it's Valentine's Day and we're sharing the love? And for those of you virtually, you know, I think that there might be a breakout room for you. I'm not sure with our new YouTube jump, but if there is not, we are so grateful for your participation and we will see you on the stream next time. And board members, we have our meeting after this.